Greetings everyone, I'm Mitch Densley with the Palo Alto Network's Education Delivery Department. In this video, we're going to talk about integration between the Palo Alto Network's firewall and the Autofocus Threat Intelligence Cloud. We're first going to talk about the communication flow between the Palo Alto Network's firewall and Autofocus, how to add an Autofocus license to a firewall, how to enable Autofocus on a firewall, how to route the communication between a firewall and the Autofocus Cloud, and we'll see a demo of Autofocus in action. In this scenario, we've got an administrator, we'll call him Dave, and Dave is a threat hunter. So what Dave's looking for is context and information about where threats come from, how they spread, and how they might affect industries such as Dave's. So in the scenario, we've got an attacker who sends a threat through a Palo Alto Network's firewall, and then based on a wildfire analysis profile, that threat would be uploaded into wildfire where analysis will occur. And based on where this threat came from, the nature of the threat, and all of the data about that threat, that is fed into the autofocus platform and becomes threat intelligence. So what Dave is after is some of this threat intel. He then, from his firewall, accesses data from autofocus relevant to a certain communication pattern, or maybe a wildfire verdict he's seen, or something else. Here you can see the communication between a firewall and autofocus uses port 10443. Even if Dave wants to, he could browse directly to autofocus, autofocus.paloaltonetworks.com, and this will use just standard SSL 443. In order to activate an autofocus license, this is done first within the Palo Alto Networks customer support portal. From the navigation tree, look for assets, site licenses, add a site license, and then you would supply an authorization code that would be provided to you typically via email when you purchase autofocus access. Agree and submit, and then within your firewalls, go retrieve license keys from the license server, and then you will see an autofocus license active within your firewall. Once the license has been added, you'll notice on the Device Setup Management tab, there's a new section, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, labeled Autofocus, where then you can check the box to enable it, click OK, and then Autofocus will be integrated into the logs of the Palo Alto Network's firewall. Now, after you've selected this option, clicked OK, and committed, Autofocus should now be active within your firewall. There's no dashboard widget that will show you the communication behavior within Autofocus, but if you see this checkbox set to enable within the web UI, or there's a corresponding show command from the CLI, and if you see autofocus options within the logs, you can be confident that autofocus is enabled for this firewall. Now, one important thing that we need to discuss is how the firewall will be able to talk to autofocus. By default, the firewall will attempt to use the management interface for all communication between itself and external resources such as autofocus. This is not ideal, however, since the management interface really is a protected resource that you do not want to give internet access to. So what you can do under the device tab setup services, notice the section service features, you can configure a service route, which will change the communication from using the management interface on a per service basis. You can change that communication to egress from any traffic interface you choose. In this case, I've selected my Ethernet 1 slash 1, egressing from my untrust zone. Now, if this is coming from untrust going to untrust, this traffic will be permitted using the intra-zone default security policy rule, which is allowed by default. Now, you may wish to also change the communication from using Ethernet 1.1 to an internal interface, such as Ethernet 1 slash 2 in this case. Now, because the traffic would be egressing from the trust zone destined for the untrust zone, this traffic would by default match the interzone default security rule and would then be denied, so then you must explicitly allow this communication traffic. One of the major benefits of using an internal interface for egressing this traffic is the traffic must transit the security policy and therefore it must also be compared to every security profile you have assigned to the rule allowing this traffic which is a wise approach for most services egressing from a Palo Alto Networks firewall. Now let's see it in action. 
Within a Palo Alto Networks firewall, you can look at any log, and you can see here I've got uh, a filter string letting me see traffic from, to Germany or Norway. And if you want some more information about these different addresses, because you might not know, is that a legitimate address? Is it uh, associated with a tax? Or is it something to watch out for? So all you need to do within the logs is hover over any data entry, and you'll see a little downward pointing arrow appear. Click on it, and now you can click on autofocus, which will open up a window while the firewall talks to the autofocus servers and retrieves all relevant data regarding this IP address. Now, once the data is loaded, you can see here that there are uh, sessions that have gone to this address, also sample data. Now, a sample is a file that's been submitted up to Wildfire for analysis. Those samples could either come from your own organization or they can be submitted globally by other Palo Alto Networks customers. Now, samples from this particular IP address have turned out to be benign, so it, on the surface, might look fairly safe. However, notice down here are these different tags. The Unit 42, or the Palo Alto Networks Threat Intelligence Team, has created these different tags associated with this address. And it doesn't necessarily mean this address is malicious, but it might mean that this address has been involved in certain malware campaigns and thus been associated with these different tags. Now, if you want to see more information about this tag, you can simply hover over it and you'll see a little pop-up window telling you more information about that tag. Or you can even jump straight to the autofocus portal where you can do much deeper analysis, perform elaborate searches, and gain a great deal more context about this address, how it's been used, and how it might be affecting your environment. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching.